Hello lovelies and welcome to Squeaky's Cauldron Podcast Season 4 Episode 3. I am your host, Sarah Evergreen, and today's episode is Fingers Pointing at the Moon. So there's a sutra in Buddhism that talks about the moon pointing finger, which goes hand in hand with an admonition to not confuse the finger for the moon. This has been a pretty foundational part of my spiritual exploration, understanding, and practice. It is the reason that I feel so comfortable pulling elements from Christianity, witchcraft, Islam, uh, and the Red Path, and a little bit here and there from Vaishnavism. Like, it's a grab bag. That's why this is called Squeaky's Cauldron, is because I just put the things that resonate into the cauldron and out comes a brand new potion. So what does this saying mean, this fingers pointing at the moon? Imagine that the moon is God. So this is my understanding of the saying, the moon is God, the moon is source, the moon is spirit, the moon is universal energy, the moon is love, the moon is life. The moon is that core essence of the I am that I am, the alpha, the omega. It is the thing. And then we have all these fingers pointing at it. And these fingers are Christianity. These fingers are Judaism. These fingers are Islam. These fingers are anything that humans have used to wrap around the idea of God. We've used language, metaphor, we have dogmas and ideas, and, and all of these things are fingers. All of the, the spells that you cast, the ways that you understand and talk about magic, the ways that I understand and talk about magic, obviously, because I'm very much in the human boat, These are ways that we direct our attention toward the moon. They are not to be confused with the moon itself. If all of this language, all of these ideas, all of it just up and disappeared one day, we obviously would lose a lot in terms of culture, in terms of comfort, in terms of of being able to understand in a particular way, but we would not lose the moon. We would not lose our ability to connect with the moon and feel the moon and see the moon in our daily lives. We would lose languaging around how to describe it to ourselves and others, but the moon is not going anywhere. These fingers that are pointing They change and shift and grow and dissolve and they move. They're living fingers and they're attached to living creatures, essentially. They're attached to us. So if you look up at the moon and can see that it's there, see, the reason that the fingers are so important and necessary is because they give us the direction to look. And the moon is obviously visible without someone pointing to it, but, and rather, and it can be so helpful to have a finger that points you in that direction. So you all know that I work with Hikate I love Hikate. She has brought so, so, so much to my life in in so many different ways. Do I think that Hikate is the moon? I do not. Do I honor her? Yes. Do I believe that she is a power that exists outside of me? Absolutely. I see how she works in other people's lives. I see how she shows up, not just to me, but to many, many other people. 
the particular signs that she brings, the particular energy that she brings, that is not unique to me. And so I cannot claim that Hecate is just something that exists within me that I have made up in order to understand the moon. I do think that these deities that we work with, Archangel Michael and Lilith as well for me, like any of the deities that we work with, any of the gods that we describe, those all do impact the world around us independent of our own understanding of them. And, and, I do think that they are not the moon. They are of the moon. They are, hmm. So my understanding of it is we as humans, it's very hard for us to kind of grasp the immensity of the moon. We need, and within that, that difficulty to grasp the immensity of it, it becomes almost impossible to have an actual relationship with the moon when the moon is the moon. And so we have developed these different ways of understanding the moon. We have developed or been granted or channeled or met these other energies that give us a way to relate to the moon on a personal level. And these ways vary because what we need from the moon for our personal individual lives varies from time to time in our lives. At some points, I need the particular medicine that Hecate can bring more than others. And at those points in time, she becomes much more prevalent in my practices. Right now, my focus is much more on Lilith and Michael. And so I have a more... Um, present, uh, very tactile relationship with them, and I commune with them more often than with Akate. Like, she's always there. She's, she's always there. And her, uh, her presence moves in and out of focus for me. And I think that that's, that's perfectly natural. However, the moon, the moon moon, <laughs> moon Moon. Oh, does anybody remember Moon Moon? I might use that for the the um, art for this episode. Probably not. Anyway, no, I will. That's great. So here you are on the ground floor of me brainstorming Moon Moon. Moving on. She is not the moon. And I, I can recognize that. Regardless of how present or not present she is in a particular time of my life, the moon is always present. The moon is never more or less present. I may be more or less aware of its presence, but it doesn't move. It doesn't change. It just is. It is the I am. It is the thing that holds everything together, moves through everything, that everything came from and to which everything will return. And that kind of, that kind of, of thing is, yeah, it's very difficult to understand. So like I said, we've either created, and by created I mean like we've kind of identified these different personalities or, or aspects of energy or needs of ourselves as humans and and made them into these stories these gods or and this is what I think personally we have encountered these different personalities and applied names and mythology to them and I think that like, this is, is how we get 
gods and goddesses who transcend cultural lines. When we have a, a god or a goddess that has a particular aspect to them, a particular personality to them, and then we look over at a completely different culture halfway around the world and thousands of years difference, and we find another god or goddess that has the same personality. It's because, in my opinion, human beings are encountering this particular flavor of the moon, and based on their culture and understandings and perspectives and context, based on their context, have been able to to tap into that and get the information from that about what kind of characteristics, names, mythology, this energy wants to impart to humans. So this energy exists outside of human beings and the way that the energy is described and presented to the human beings who have met it and are creating these mythologies or writing down, recording, documenting these things is because this energy has come in and channeled a particular set of, of understandings, stories to the person who is documenting the thing. And those gods and goddesses can't, don't, and shouldn't describe the entirety of a thing. Even when we get down to, to things that we call God, so we've got like the Abrahamic God who has a particular kind of personality that is a bit um, schizophrenic at times and varying and kind of confusing based on the things that have been recorded slash channeled by human beings into the books of the Bible and the Apocrypha and other texts. So that's one particular God. And then Jesus has his own unique personality as well. And then we can look at the descriptions of Allah in the Quran or the descriptions of Yahweh in the Torah. And branching out from there, we can look at the descriptions of great spirit in the red path or, you know, it just, it goes down the line. Anytime that we try to describe the moon, however, we are leaning on our fingers. We're leaning on our human understanding of something that is so vast and magnificent and varied and encompassing that we literally cannot, we absolutely cannot, it is not within our capability to fully understand the moon. And we get into trouble when we start saying, ah, yes, this is not just a finger, this is the moon. This is where we get zealotry. This is where we get dogmas that hurt and harm and, and ruin people's lives to the point of death. This is where we get, you know, a group of one Christians who say this is the way and another group who say this is the way and then they're fighting with one another but they both believe in Christ they both believe in God they both believe in ideally the fundamental tenets of their religion of course that's you know kind of an open for debate thing cuz again it's just it's fingers and fingers are open for debate Fingers are things that we should debate. That's one of the things that I really appreciate about the uh, about Judaism is that there is a strong emphasis on debate, on chewing over the bones of the texts, asking questions, raising doubts, bandying ideas about, really like 
getting involved with the texts. And this is something that you don't see nearly as much in the Christian faith. Uh, there's a lot more emphasis on blind faith, on doing what your the people who are in authority positions say that you should do and believe in. And there, therein, is exactly the issue, right? This is confusing a finger for the moon. It's confusing a, a speaking person, um, a man or woman or what have you on a pulpit and saying that's the moon or they speak for the moon and I can trust them implicitly and I don't have to do any of the thinking for myself. That's so fucking dangerous. This is what happens when we confuse our fingers for the moon. So, one of my most beloved um, perspectives and ways to practice magic is through sex magic. I have found it to be incredibly empowering and powerful and able to... Like, when I started practicing sex magic, I was so deep in shame and codependency and uh, doubt, doubt, doubt about myself and my abilities and even just my right to be in the world. And I started practicing and gradually these things have shifted. Not entirely, because I'm still a human and this is something that's part of the human existence, you know, dealing with shame navigating doubt, working with self-worth, especially when there's such a history of abuse like I have, like that'll, that I think that'll be lifelong work and working with sex magic will be a lifelong work. But I don't confuse sex magic for the answer. I, I don't confuse my perspective on sex magic, which is at its fundamental level that the energy that holds together all of our atoms and cells and subatomic particles and whatnot is the energy of sex, of creation, of um, this holy joining of lovers. I don't think that that is the capital T truth. It is for me a truth that works. It is for me a truth that resonates. And this is what I teach in Inside the Lilith Factor is this perspective and then different ways to utilize this perspective to grow closer to yourself, dismantle shame, um, to manifest, to get closer to God, all of this stuff. And it is just one of many, many ways of describing the same thing, of describing the moon. It's a, a way of describing it that works for me and that seems to resonate with people who work with it as well. And I'm so fucking clear on the fact that it is not a thing that will resonate or should resonate with everyone because we're different and one of the amazing things that the moon god has done is create this incredible incredible world full of diversity when we lack diversity we we can't survive we cannot survive without diversity and I want to celebrate that. I want to celebrate all of the different fingers that are pointing at the moon while understanding that the moon is independent of all of those fingers. Really embracing this concept has given me access to, like I said at the top of the episode, to practices uh, inside Christianity, understandings of the world and God, that exist within that um, that particular faith and religion, however you want to call it, within those texts, really, 
and within my personal relationship to Jesus and the Abrahamic God. And it's made it so that I can practice witchcraft and I can work with in the magical realms and altered states of consciousness and all of these other their paths and perspectives. I can work with those and still call myself a Christian and feel very grounded and rooted in that moniker, in that title. And simultaneously, like, explore Islam without too much weird feelings. Like, there's still a little bit, every time that I move into a new realm of well, every time I move into exploring a new finger, there's part of me that wonders, am I allowed to do this? Is this really okay? Like, do I have permission from the moon to look at it through another finger? Okay, so I just, like that's the first time I've ever framed it that way for myself. Am I allowed to look at the moon through the perspective of another finger when I say it out loud, the answer is an obvious resounding yes within me. Yes, absolutely. Look at me. I feel like the moon says, look at me through every finger possible. Understand me through every path. Find me in all of the different nooks and crannies of the world, all of the different shadow places and lit up plateaus of the human experience. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Find me, find me, find me. Of course that's what the moon wants. Of course that's what God wants. God wants to be seen. God wants to, to have this connection, this understanding. And even if I, as I say that, like, I, I recognize, again, like, God cannot go further away or get closer to you or I or anyone because God, the moon, exists in and through absolutely everything. So to say that God wants to be seen, isn't that even that, like, that's part of a finger God is seen. God is. Just is. Doesn't need to be seen. And yet, at the same time, I know that I have experienced these moments of union with God. These brief tastes of what I would call enlightenment. Because I am fully lit up by the moon by the moon's light i am i'm not even lit up by the moon's light i am the moon's light and the moon's light is me and all is one and it's not a place that i can live i don't think it's a place that any of us are meant to get to and stay i think that enlightenment is a place that we visit it's a place that we taste it's a place that we can dance with from time to time, and those little tastes, those little visits are able to sustain us for years, years and years. Just one hit of union with Godhead, I, I think, can be enough to sustain a human for their entire life. Because it's not something that you forget. So when I say God wants us to connect, I reckon it's more maybe true to say that, that our lives are so much improved, so much nourished when we do connect. And if God, if the moon has a particular personality, I imagine that it would want us, 
its children, like everything. It would want its children to feel the love, feel the connection, feel the non-duality of itself. But yeah, that's, that's a personality thing in and of itself. So maybe, maybe the, the deeper truth is that that's just what we need for ourselves in order to navigate this very strange, very challenging, very heartbreaking at times, very beautiful world, 3D world that we live in, this world of duality, this world of me and you, us and them, light and dark, when the moon is I am you, we are them, light is dark, it is all and everything encompassed in one. So that's my, um, that's my <laughs> ramble on fingers pointing at the moon for you. If you're interested in more of this kind of thing, as well as uh, new and full moon resources that comes out twice a month, get onto my newsletter list, uh, my email list. I don't know. I'm thinking of changing the name of it. Uh, anyway, moon pages. I will link that in the description and the show notes. Um, I'd love to see you there. It's pretty cool, and you can stay up to date on stuff that's happening with the Lilith Factor as well, like when the next launch is going to be, which is going to be, I think, a couple months out from now. But yeah, go sign up for that. Check that out. And if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, also the links for that will be in the description. So go forth, Find the moon, seek the moon out through any finger that is available and resonant to you. And until next time, my lovelies, take care of yourselves, and as always, use your voice.